can see by the scores at three-quarter time, Collingwood most consistent in the first, second and third quarters. The Magpies leading by 45 points at the final change. We return now to VFL Park. We... 45 points Collingwood lead by. And they got by 24 at quarter time, 29 at half time. And it's hard to see the Magpies being beaten at the moment with Detroit, a lot of injury problems. Gary Pert up near the centre of the ground. Roderick takes the hand pass from Matera. Crispin's in the road, crashing through Ruse. Chance for Fitzroy still, as the ball was booted up by Baldwin. That's a very, very high kick. Armstrong, right on the boundary line, nearly runs out of room. It's picked up by Tranter, who's done well today, getting it to Banks. Hawk, looping hand pass, Morwood. And whatever he does is usually good. Doesn't waste a possession, he didn't that time. Getting it to Hawk, back to Christian. Rendell, so a turnover now as it comes back to Kepler. Spirals the punt kick. Two on one in favour of Collingwood, knocked away by Banks. Back to Morewood, looking for a free kick, fresh air shot. Who's carrying a cork side. Tranter gets ridden into the ground. Armstrong, excellent hand pass. Bruce should be able to score and puts through a valuable goal for Fitzroy. And Paul Rue's first goal, but I think it's just a little too late. Because in that third quarter, Collingwood really did increase the lead. But here's the ball going to be shot out. Gale tackled. Tranter, who I've been impressed with, just couldn't control it as he went to ground there today. And Paul Rue's a very, very easy goal. They don't come much easier than that. Just one too many handball by Collingwood in the centre of the ground, wasn't it, uh, Don? They came out of half back pretty well, but uh, well, that's a sign of a team with plenty of confidence. They're running. They brought it from the full back line to the centre wing without a, well, without anybody kicking the ball. Well, three quick goals by Fitzroy, and all of a sudden you could see a little bit of panic by Collingwood. Wind well tackled. Pert. He's been productive already at half forward. Kerrison caught by Harris. Shane Maud finds some space now, and here go Collingwood with right, right into the pocket. No mark taken by McEwen. Turner, back onto the right foot. Could this be goal number three for Jamie Turner? Yes! I bet he couldn't believe his luck, Jamie Turner, in his 100th game. The way the guys just went left and right and left the space for him to run into, it was quite amazing. Here it is, McEwen. Now watch Turner in the lead for the ball. One goes one way and they all seen, and he just made the critical Turner at the right time. Came back to his trusty right foot, an easy goal, and 45 metres out, and he's very happy. So, whatever Fitzroy can offer, Collingwood have the answers. 11-17. Plays 5-8. Rendell can't break away. Cloak just gets his foot to the ball, but it's to the advantage of the Magpies. Brown to Krasiska is brilliant. Krasiska's kick is a scrubber. Gather by Dacos is OK. Hand pass to Hawk. Into an open goal. And Hawk misses a sitter. Should have kicked that one. Second behind to Paul Hawk. And his game has been reasonable 16 kicks and nine hand passes that's better than reasonable isn't it yeah. yes a pretty good player paul hawk and uh, a bit of an underdog maybe for the brownlow medal this year his season has been fairly consistent the kick in marked by brown he spots dacos in the pocket and dacos takes the mark inside 50. dacos has kicked one goal and for him a fairly quiet day no one moving there's that hole there, if you can drop it over, someone lead into it. Going for the torpedo punt kick. And he gets onto it too. Just floats across the front of the goals. There's a mark to Collingwood. Hawk. See, I thought Hisalakis infringed then when he went for that mark. We'll watch this on replay. It wasn't, it was uh, Mullane, in fact, who I thought infringed. So Hawk. There's a chance to kick his first. Tight angle. It looks like a goal. Paul Hawk kicks his first. And Collingwood put the first nail in the coffin. And it's his 102nd goal in his league career. Paul Hawk, a very, very good player was his win in Sydney. It took a little while to come to grips with it. A different style of game down here in Melbourne with Collingwood. 
but a very, very good player from the Wagga Tigers. And it's good to see him start to come to grips with it and been a very good player with Collingwood this year. Paul Hawke, the ninth Collingwood player to kick a goal today. His first, 38 plays 90. Kerrison, well tackled by two Fitzroy players. Nothing for it from the umpire. Fitzroy trying to work it forward, but it's David Cloak. The veteran back into the side today. Krasiska takes the hand pass, and Hawke make it another one. He got one a little high. Baldwin breaks clear for Fitzroy. Over the head of Kepler, Mullane may get there first. Two speedsters. Wine tries to soccer it away. Back it comes to Morwood. Kepler, written into the ground. And it's pretty untidy stuff out there at the moment. Morwood finally with a hand pass, intercepting as Broderick. It's a brick wall insofar as Fitzroy is concerned. And the ball finally picked up by Baldwin. He drives it up to the edge of the square. Fitzroy marginally in attack. Matera, well tackled by Christian. There's Lyon. Paddles the ball forward. Christian again. And then they're going down like nine pins. Who's going to get the three? It's going to be a Collingwood ball. And the skipper will take it. Will have gone the other way. Shaw to Turner. And got a quiet first quarter. Kapler took him apart, but since he's kicked three goals. Christian, mark or free kick? Good mark by Michael Christian. Looks as if he might have injured himself, but that was a great mark. Running with the flight of the ball. Not easy ones to take. You see here, just eyes on the ball and just may have got a finger in the eye or in the nose. McEwen leading out. Took a brilliant goal at the other end of the ground earlier in the match. And we've seen him at the same ground miss some sitters from about 10 metres out. It was certainly one of the goals of the day. Similar distance out. Stasevic was the flyer. It's out of bounds. Under 20 minutes left in this match. So Collingwood, if they can stay in front, will draw level on points with Fitzroy, but of course they have a better percentage. Cloak. She used his strength and experience then, didn't he, David Cloak? Good effort by the big fellow. A few grey hairs there too around the temple out there. I wish I had as many as he did. Out of bounds, or was it a behind? Rush behind. Rush behind it is, yes, you're right. So a point. And the scoreboard indicates. Collingwood's 19th behind, 12-19 to 5-8. Lynch. Rod Austin has really thrown the side around today to try to get some drive. And by and large, hasn't succeeded. Lynch, magnificent kick, covers 65 metres. Ruse can't mark. Harris is a chance. Strooper pulled off it by Kerrison. Desperate stuff by Mullane to get it back to Gaifer. Gaifer's sweeping hand pass. Parisalakis gets his left hand to the ball. Gaifer's caught. Strooper just gets his foot to the ball. Kapler can't control it. Look at all players are obviously pretty tired. And we've seen a fair amount of scrambly football. Mullane gets up holding his back. Let's hope he's all right. Very important player of Collingwood uh, to make fifth spot and then do anything in the finals. Cloak. Roderick over the top, Matera, short kick, Lyon goes straight through him, straight through Shane Maud, he's quick to recover, a hand pass to Tony Shaw at centre half back, Tony Shaw's kick a little too high for Gavin Brown, Blakey's back there quickly, Baldwin, sweeping hand pass, Armstrong, right in the centre of VFL Park, Matthew Armstrong's long kick to within goal scoring distance for the Lions. Here's a chance now for Fitzroy. Leon Harris gives it out to Gary Pern. He fumbles. Well tackled by Shane Morwood. Back it goes to Leon Harris. He pops away and puts it through for Fitzroy's sixth goal.